Seek him who made the Pleiades and Orion, and turns deep darkness into the morning, and darkens the day into night, who calls for the waters of the sea, and pours them out upon the surface of the earth. The Lord is his name. My friends, welcome to prayer today, Friday, the 26th of April. Let's take a deep breath as we make our confession to Almighty God. Let us together confess our sins against God, our neighbor, ourselves, and creation. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, open our lips together, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us together. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us worship. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Today we read chapter 34 of Exodus, the restoration of the covenant. Remember Moses finding the camp in disarray and sinfulness smashed the two tablets. Chapter 34, verse 1. The Lord said to Moses, Carve two tablets of stone like the first, and I will inscribe upon the tablets the words that were on the first tablets which you shattered. Be ready by morning, and in the morning come up to Mount Sinai and present yourself there to me on the top of the mountain. No one else shall come up with you, and no one else shall be seen anywhere on the mountain. Neither shall the flocks and the herds graze at the foot of this mountain. So Moses carved two tablets of stone like the first, and early in the morning he went up on Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, taking the two stone tablets with him. The Lord came down in a cloud. He stood with him there and proclaimed the name Lord. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in kindness and faithfulness, extending kindness to the thousandth generation, forgiving iniquity, transgression, and sin. Yet he does not remit all punishment, but visits the iniquity of parents upon children and children's children upon the third and fourth generations. Moses hastened to bow low to the ground in homage and said, If I have gained your favor, O Lord, pray, let the Lord go in our midst, even though this is a stiff-necked people. Pardon our iniquity and our sin and take us for your own. He said, I hereby make a covenant. Before all your people, I will work such wonders as have not been wrought on all the earth or in any nation. And all the people who are with you shall see how awesome are the Lord's deeds which I will perform for you. Mark well what I command you this day. I will drive out before you the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. 
Beware of making a covenant with the inhabitants of the land against which you are advancing, lest they be a snare in your midst. No, you must tear down their altars, smash their pillars, and cut down their sacred posts, for you must not worship any other god, because the Lord, whose name is impassioned, is an impassioned god. You must not make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, for they will lust after their gods and sacrifice to their gods and invite you, and you will eat of their sacrifices." And when you take wives from among their daughters for your sons, their daughters will lust after their gods and will cause your sons to lust after their gods. You shall not make molten gods for yourselves. You shall observe the feast of the unleavened bread, eating unleavened bread for seven days, as I have commanded you, at the set time of the month of Abib. For in the month of Abib you went forth from Egypt. Every first issue of the womb is mine, and from all your livestock that drop a male as firstling, whether cattle or sheep, but the firstling of an ass you shall redeem with a sheep. If you do not redeem it, you must break its neck, and you must redeem every firstborn among your sons. None shall appear before me empty-handed. Six days you shall work, but on the seventh day you shall cease from labor. You shall cease from labor even at plowing time and harvest time. You shall observe the feast of weeks, of the first fruits of the wheat harvest, and the feast of ingathering at the turn of the year. Three times a year all your males shall appear before the sovereign Lord, the God of Israel. I will drive out nations from your path and enlarge your territory. No one will covet your land when you go up to appear before the Lord your God three times a year. You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with anything leavened, and the sacrifice of the feast of Passover shall not be left lying until morning. The choice first fruits of your soil you shall bring to the house of the Lord your God. You shall not boil a kid in its mother's milk. And the Lord said to Moses, Write down these commandments, for in accordance with these commandments I make a covenant with you and with Israel. And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He ate no bread, drank no water, and he wrote down on the tablet the terms of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. So Moses came down from Mount Sinai, and as Moses came down from the mountain bearing the two tablets of the pact, Moses was not aware that the skin of his face was radiant, since he had spoken with him. Aaron and all Israelites saw that the skin of Moses' face was radiant, and they shrank from coming near him. But Moses called them, and Aaron and all the chieftains in the assembly returned to him, and Moses spoke to them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near, and he instructed them concerning all that the Lord had imparted to him on Mount Sinai. And when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. Whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would leave the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see how radiant the skin of Moses' face was. Moses would then put the veil back over his face until he went in to speak with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is such a pregnant and full chapter, really worthy of your studying, going back to chapter 34 and reading it more in sections than in one fell swoop. Hear once again these key core character traits of the Lord. A God, this is verse 6, a God compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in kindness and faithfulness, extending kindness to a thousand generations, forgiving iniquity, transgressions, and sin. And yet, too, a God of justice, holding families to account. Please note with me how this very exercise of redoing the tablets, reestablishing the covenant, is a sign and acting out of God's great compassion toward his stiff-necked people. Thanks be to God, God is a God of second chances. We pick up our reading in Paul's letter to the church at Thessalonica, chapter 2, verse 17, carrying through to the end of chapter 3, ending at verse 13. 
As for us, brothers and sisters, when, for a short time, we were made orphans by being separated from you, in person, not in heart, we longed with great eagerness to see you face to face, for we wanted to come to you. Certainly I, Paul, wanted to again and again, but Satan blocked our way. For what is our hope, or joy, or crown of boasting before our Lord Jesus at his coming? Is it not you? Yes, you are our glory and joy. Therefore, when we could bear it no longer, we decided to be left alone in Athens, and we sent Timothy, our brother and co-worker for God, in proclaiming the gospel of Christ, to strengthen and encourage you for the sake of your faith, so that no one would be shaken by these persecutions." Indeed, you yourselves know that this is what we are destined for. In fact, when we were with you, we told you beforehand that we were to suffer persecution. So it turned out, as you know. For this reason, when I could bear it no longer, I sent to find out about your faith. I was afraid that somehow the tempter had tempted you and that our labor had been in vain. But Timothy has just now come to us from you and has brought us the good news of your faith and love. He has told us also that you always remember us kindly and long to see us, just as we long to see you. For this reason, brothers and sisters, during all our distress and persecution, we have been encouraged about you through your faith. For we now live if you continue to stand firm in the Lord. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you, and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, do you hear Paul's love and warmth toward the congregation, his joy at the hearing news of their continuing faith development through Timothy? Though he is not able to be with them in person, he is with them in spirit. His love continues for them. It truly is a pastor's joy to know that the flock is growing in faith and hope and in love. May the Lord make you increase and abound in love for God and for one another. And may the Lord strengthen your heart in holiness, that you, on the day of appearing before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus, may be presented blameless. Lord, be our helper. Amen. In joy and hope, let us pray to the source of all life, saying, with an exclamation point, hear us, Lord of glory, that our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his holy and life-giving resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord together, hear us, Lord of glory, that isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the Easter gospel. Let us pray to the Lord, hear us, Lord of glory that God may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love, let us pray to the Lord, hear us, Lord of glory, that God may provide for those who lack food, work, or shelter. This day we pray for Chris, for Rita, for Fred. Let us pray to the Lord, hear us, Lord of glory, that by his power, Wars and famine, such as in Gaza, Syria, Sudan, Ukraine, that these afflictions may cease through all the earth. Let us pray to the Lord, hear us, Lord of glory, that God may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying, that they may be comforted and strengthened. Let us pray to the Lord, hear us, Lord of glory that God may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, 
that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. Gathering our prayers, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Now, friends, the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit enfold you and those you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day today, Friday. Remember, a week from tomorrow, the 4th of May, is our concert here at St. Philip's with the Toronto Welsh Male Voice Choir. We're hoping that you'll be able to join us, attend. Tickets are available through the office or at the door. God bless you and yours. Have a wonderful day. TGIF.